Hey guys, it's Rahul, and today we're going to talk about my Philadelphia Regionals re tournament report and the deck I played. So the deck I played was Mega Rayquaza. Um, I was going to play Flareon up till, I want to say, well, Flareon and Mega Rayquaza were the two decks I had built. Uh, Fred Hoban and I worked on a list for about three weeks, but I couldn't pull the trigger on Flareon because I got cold feet at the last second, um, and I settled on Mega Ray. So, um, this is the list I played. You, you probably already see a bunch of weird stuff. Uh, I'll explain myself. So we'll start off with the Bonnelby. What Bonnelby does is, you can either bur you can attack twice, you can burrow, discard the card top card of your opponent's deck, or shuffle a card from the discard pile back into your deck. And I played the Bunny because if you just take a quick glance at the list, you can notice that I do not play Puzzle of Time. Um, I'll explain that as I go along. Uh, so I put the Bunny in for some recovery. I played a 1-2 split on the Rayquaza line because uh, there was a lot more Night March than I first expected there to be, and I was hearing floating rumors about it, so having the Dragon Rayquaza to deal with that and Mega Manectric in the early stages was pretty good. The colorless one is if I expected more Toad, which ultimately didn't matter. Um, so there was a 3-3 three, three line, 4 Shaman, pretty normal, the Execute for discarding and drawing, blah blah blah, all that stuff. I played the Verizian in my list um, over the Magirna because um, the Magirna EX, while it does stop Trevenant, the um, Verizian stops lasers and it stops... Just I just didn't like um, laser locking, because like, laser is pretty much one of the biggest banes of this deck um, if I get stuck. I do have Keldeo, of course, but like if the Silent Lab is down, it doesn't matter, in a sense. Uh, one Jirachi, two Hoopa, the Keldeo, um, the idea was for the Russian retreat into whatever I needed to be, so nothing gets Lysander stalled, but at the end of the day, Keldeo is probably one of my most useless cards in the entire deck. Um, in hindsight, I wish it was a second Execute or a second Hex Maniac, but it was really useless throughout the whole day, and I just wish it didn't exist. <laughs> I put a Seismitoad, because Night March and Sableye Garb had been getting a lot of popularity in the last, like, two days before the event. And if you Quake and Punch Karen, you pretty much beat Night March. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And, like, Toad just helps in weird situations with weird things, as I'll just explain in my report as I go. Um, then I had two battle compressors. Um, that's all you need, really. One comp search, three mega turbo standard stuff, one special charge because I don't play the puzzles, so I need a way to get back DCEs if I have a bad discard any place. Three trainers mail, four ultra balls, four video seekers. Standard, standard, standard. One AZ. Uh, I really like AZ in case something gets stranded or I really like open Hoopa and the other one's prized. Uh, it's just it's it's, it's a, a personal choice of mine. Two Chorus. Uh, originally I had one, but when I cut puzzles, I wanted I, I wanted to have another draw supporter other than just that in the end. And I really don't like Sycamore in this deck because I don't like discarding any of the resources. So having Chorus is like, well, it's prized. A lot of the times the game's very difficult. So. I just was like, I want a second one, and I need like I wanted some more cards, so the puzzles just became a second chorus and some other cards. Um, the Hex Maniac one, that's pretty standard. I would really want a second, but there's the, the list is just very tight. Uh, there's one Karen. It could be a Sacred Ash. It didn't really matter throughout the day which it was. Um, one Lysander, one N, one Zarasic. Pretty normal stuff. Um, four Skyfields, two Float Stones. 3 Spirit Links, 4 DCE, 3 Grass. All that's super, super standard. Um, let me pull out the opponents that I played and what decks I played against. Get to Philly, everything's pretty good. <laughs> the people I consulted with this list were Ryan, Sable House, and Azul Griego. And Azul uh, was pretty much like, do you really need puzzles? And I thought about it, and played a couple games without puzzles, and I felt a noticeable difference when I really wanted my core that one time. Or... I had more flex options to retreat into a Bunnelby and put cards back in my deck uh, after ending them or like hoping to make a comeback. So let's go with my thing. First round I played against Frank Joseph, who was playing a uh, Aegis Slash Bronzong deck. Not the Genesect version, the, there was like one Genesect I think I saw. And um, it got a little tricky, but because um, I had only one hex. But I got to the point where I just put three basic energy out of Mega Rayquaza and just started sweeping his board, um, both games. Uh, and it was pretty pretty straightforward, got them both. 
Round two, I played against a very well-known player, Nathan Beck, playing Landorus EX, Mega Mewtwo EX, Garbodor. And game one, uh, he got a Parallel City Garbodor to stick, and I lost the game. Game two, he end me out of... I pretty much turn one his Landorus on my second turn. And then uh, he could not get the one shot with Mega Mewtwo, so I needed to have one more basic Pokemon to knock it out on my bench, and he and me to four and I was just four dead cards. <laughs> mm. I lost two, just yeah. Round three I played against Russell McAdams, playing Mega Septile on Mega Vile Plume. Uh, it was a weird deck, weird concept. He never got the Vile Plume off, um, and so I just steamrolled him. Um, not getting the Vile Plume off in the matchup seems pretty weird. I don't know exactly what his deck was trying to do. There was a lot of things going on in there. Um like he had Via Seekers and a Vile Plume deck, and I was very confused. Uh, it just kind of looked like he played everything he had blinged out. We'll see. Uh, then I played against. Uh, th this is my round. I got ended up being down paired, technically speaking. And I played against Mega Ray Um I got the first game because he made a crucial misplay. And then he got the second game because he end me to. Two, and uh, I couldn't recover. And then the third game, um, we were just setting up, and it became a tie. So what can you do about that? Round well, five, I played against Rainbow Road, which is arguably my worst matchup um, on paper. I hate. I did not want to see Rainbow Road. I expected very little. Um, we both had very awkward starts with him not finding his floatstone or anything early for his Age of because I played the Age of Slash Latios variant that. Um, Cantu put out. And I opened Bottleby and was drawing very poorly, so I just continued to burrow for a couple turns. And then <clears throat> and then it got to the point where he'd use a lot of resources, so I Lysander up the Aegis Slash and I just started quaking punching it. And uh, he decked. Yeah. So I just, and I just <clears throat> kept zero sticking off all the DCEs because he'd put all of them down. And um, once I got rid of all his energy, he just conceded the game. Game two, he had a pretty poor start, and I just had it. Um, round six, I played against Toad Bats. Um, lost the first one because he legitimately um, <clears throat> just drew better than me. Um, nothing happened there. Game two, I won. Um, should have won it much earlier because my opponent um, computer searched away a playable supporter for a scoop up to get. To a zero card hand, let me tell you. Zero card hand to get Jirachi AX out of the active spot and Quaking Punch me on his first turn. Hit Tails and top decks to N the following turn. So that became a game that should have literally just been me winning in two turns because of a a play that should never, ever, ever happen in a game. As a player, don't ever do that. Just play the N. Why? <clears throat> the third game, I just donked him because um he opened low and Jirachi and passed, and I... uh pretty much did what Mega Ray Quaza does and set up and knocked him out. And then <clears throat> round 7 I played against Thomas Miller playing Rainbow Road. And he pretty much drew really, really well. And like on his first possible turn attacking both games, he was able to dish out insane amounts of damage to take a knockout. <clears throat> one game I think it was like a Keldeo. I want to say one game it was um. Verizian he knocked out it was just an EX Pokemon went down both games this is like Rainbow Road drew really well I have to draw really well there's nothing I can do about it um, and it's frankly just a scary and it's just not a matchup I want to play against and it happened to me at this point I'm knocked out of date 2 <clears throat> at 4 two, one if I do win the following 2 I have a secured spot in top 64, walking out with some points, some packs, whatever. <clears throat> Winning one of my next two puts me in top 128, probably 16 points. I get paired up against Toad Bats the following round, and um, the summary of the game is uh, I needed a DCE to win the game. Uh, I Colrus for 16, a full 16, with like 24 cards in deck, and there's 3 DC in there, with it. And uh, then I went to turn in my drop slip, because... Um, when that happens, uh, I just did not want to play the game anymore because my deck was not drawing well and I was um, not having fun. But in 
hindsight, I honestly don't think I would change a sing I would change the Keldeo for a second Execute or a second Hexmaniac and take this exact same deck back into the tournament. The meta was pretty much what I expected it to be, but with over 600 players, you have to hit the right matchups, or you literally um, can just lose and have a bad time. For example, me. Um, so I just got bad matchups, and um, frankly, a little unlucky. Uh, I wouldn't say I played near flawlessly. I probably I made mistakes throughout the day. For example, I compressored uh, turn one in one of the games, and I completely forgot to put a supporter in the discard, and um, that came back to bite when I had a VS Seeker in hand, and I just had nothing to play. Um, small stuff. Um, I'm pretty tired when I'm making this video, so I apologize for, I guess, rushing through it. But the deck is pretty straightforward. I just didn't play puzzles because I was very scared that Toad would be a deck and Trevenant would be a deck. And having those four dead cards in those matchups is just not good. And a lot of the times in early puzzle time, like one in your hand or even both, it's just kind of like, I don't want these. I, I would rather these be anything else in the deck. So, I just didn't think puzzles were good. Other than that, um, I want to do a huge shout out to Sam Chen, Mike Fouché, um, and Jonathan Crespo for doing really, really well. Um, um, like, the deck was good. I'm not upset that I played it, I'm just a little upset that I could have played Flareon. Um, because Karen wasn't actually that big. So, if for future tournaments, keep in mind that both at Orlando and at Philadelphia, Karen wasn't actually a factor. So what does this mean? Moving forward, is Karen actually going to see play? Are people actually going to counter Nightwatch and Flareon? Because there was like, I think, three Nightwatchers that made it to the second day of play. And... Yeah, that just speaks volumes. Um, we'll do. I'll do more of a stuff leading up to Fort Wayne soon to get you guys on track for Standard again, because I actually do enjoy Standard a lot, and I'd like to make some cool decks and try some stuff out with Evolutions. But until then, thank you guys for watching this short report, and um, I hope you try out the list, see what you like about it, and we'll we'll chat again. Thank you.